they were not Hamas. How could he possibly know that? He's special forces. I mean, he like you. you okay, you, you think all right, fine. But well, I'm, no, now, I'm just curious. Could you explain that to me? How would he know if they're Hamas or not? If Hamas could wear civilian clothing? He has fought. Like he's he's fought. Look at all the civilians. This guy shops at Target. Most of the civilians killed on October 7th were killed by Hamas. Okay, but the rapes were done by randoms if they happened. What not rapes? What happens after the PLO leaves to the Lebanese population at the hands of the IDF and its proxies there? What happens? The, I the phalanges are the proxies of the IDF? Why were the phalanges so I incensed? It's just relentless denialism here. It's not relentless denialism. Like, you just have a one-sided view of the history. Why were the phalanges so upset at the Palestinians? Who got assassinated oh, by oh, who? What happened? Like, oh, so... <laughs> So it's justified, like I didn't say it was justified, but you're making it sound like the point. Then what's the point? Because you're the that point every, is to everybody not everybody has grievances. Do you think that there is a group of people in the world that doesn't have grievances against another people? No, but you're making it sound like Israel can have no grievances. Are we already on? Is that how streaming works? That like as soon as you click join, you're like on. Yep, live on stream on air. It's a All right, well, hello everybody. All right. I got big questions. I went down a rabbit hole last night. Oh, excellent. Um, the UN released a report uh, from their like envoy of sexual or conflict related sexual violence investigations, blah, 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 which I'm sure you're aware of, yeah. Um, yeah. And then I saw that you guys had written a couple articles relating to this, especially in response to a New York Times article that got written. And so I kind of, yeah, dug through all of these. I think I read about seven or eight of these uh, over the past couple of days. And I just kind of like digging into the, I guess like the reporting and the the directions that these are going. I got interesting questions. <laughs> okay. Um, here's, this is, I guess my first question to kind of like orient the conversation. In, in your mind, if you had to like assign a likelihood of over 50%, what do you think, in regards to all of the sexual violence, what do you think has happened, I guess, on October 7th in Israel? Like, what is the likely story, do you think? I mean, you, people have to realize there's also, like, October 8th. Like, it took uh, a couple the days. IDF. What, yeah, it took the IDF a while uh, until they, you know, responded to the, to the, you know, the early morning, you know, early morning October 7th bus. They bust through the fence. The Nova uh, Music Festival is getting attacked like um, immediately. Uh, after that, you have minimum hundreds. I Israel says hundreds, maybe thousands of you know other other people from Gaza who can't come across the fence. Uh, five or six, at least five or six organized armed groups who are not Hamas um, operating. Some of them with some affiliation. Some of them seeming to operate independently, some of them seemingly criminal gangs. Uh, and then you have, you know, just absolute mayhem and violence for a long stretch of period. And what the UN report says is that, and you could read one of their first quotes, it says like, in the context of the violence uh, of October 7th, it is reasonable to conclude uh, that sexual violence was committed amid that, amid all of that other violence. And I, and I think that is a completely fair statement to make. I think it would be shocking uh, if, if we found out that there was zero. Like, why would there be all of this violence and all this mayhem, but absolutely zero sexual violence? What we've focused on is the broader claim that Israel began pushing in early December, and then which really catapulted with the end, end of December article in the New York Times, that Hamas, as part of its military plan, weaponized weaponized rape and sexual violence against Israeli women, like that, that and that is the claim that if if you go to let's say, uh, the the Israeli uh, embassy sites around the world, go look up, you know, the uh, Israeli embassy in uh, in France. There, go look at their Twitter account, their social account, the one in Japan, the one in the UK. Uh, that they are tr they are making this claim that there was this, you know, mass campaign, this mass weaponization of sexual violence. Frank Luntz is has been giving private uh, messaging guidance uh, to supporters of Israel after focus grouping and polling 
the question. He tells them the number one way to get support for the ongoing slaughter in Gaza is to call Hamas brutal, savage rapists. And he says, do not use the word evidence. Like it, it's a very Frank Luntzian thing. He's like, don't use the word evidence because then people are going to ask what evidence do you have? Use the word truth because truth is something that just feels a way to somebody. And it feels true to people that Hamas is a you know, savage, brutal, bunch of savage, brutal rapists. But don't, but don't say evidence because then you'll say, well, what evidence do we have? And then you have to start saying, oh, well, according to the UN, they don't actually have any evidence that Hamas participated in this. So what I've been saying is, what is, what is the evidence to back up this sweeping, aggressive claim that Hamas itself deliberately carried out a campaign of sexual assault around Israel? Okay, so then if I'm thinking of like, the broad narrative of, of what's happening, I'm thinking of two things. I'm thinking of what happened on from October 7th to October 10th, and I'm thinking of what's going on with the international, or, or namely Israel's, I guess, pushing of this particular thing. Are we then of the opinion right. that like, maybe a couple sexually related violence happened, like maybe a few of these events happened, and then Israel is largely fabricating the claim, and then they've also roped in these other actors like Raz Cohen and these other people to be part of the gimmick, or? Well, I mean, we, we know for certain that uh, much of it is fabricated. And and we've, like, we've reported that. Like, w w I'm not sure what, I'm sure not sure what, what your question there is. It So here is my impression in reading everything. Right. <clears throat> my impression in reading everything was the idea was that. Oh, by the way, Raz yeah. Cohen. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Roz Cohen is very ex is specific, and he's former special forces. Like this is somebody who would know. Like he is, he has been very clear from the beginning uh, that the perpetrators that he is describing, um, and set aside whether he saw it or didn't see it, based on different testimony that he's given. It's a traumatic situation. You can imagine how your test, how your you know your eyewitness testimony might might evolve. Uh, he himself says that the people he saw were not Hamas. Well, that they were that they were civilians. He didn't say that. To be clear, he does say that. Here, he let's did. pull it up. No, no, we don't have to. I watched this video. He says they're wearing civilian clothes, right? But he says they were not Hamas. They, how, how could he possibly know that? Because he's, he's special forces. I mean, he like you. you okay, you, you think? All right, fine. But well, I'm, no, I'm just curious. Could you explain that to me? How would he know if they're Hamas or not? If Hamas could wear civilian clothing, so. he has fought. Like he's he's fought. Like he knows what he's talking about. Like he knows all of Hamas, no. or I mean, he know, he knows the sig he knows the signature of Hamas. If if you if you think he's wrong, that's fine to say. What okay. I'm saying, as a journalist, he has claimed to have the expertise to know whether or not they're Hamas and to be certain that they were not. Okay, I, I think we watched through. Say, well, how does he know? Hey, like, did he check their IDs? Sure. He was yeah, right. He oh. but okay. I'm sorry. You can also imagine how somebody who has a lot of experience in the military can tell the difference between professional soldiers in, in a in a unit uh and civilians maybe yeah I, I i saw several interviews with him yesterday he might have used that exact line that these were definitely civilians i didn't see that i know the new york times story and in a couple of the interviews i other interviews i saw he said they were wearing civilian clothes but I, maybe he did say that right, in another right, interview well, I've right, seen, the, so. in the in the right but the new york times is telling you a particular story about hamas weaponizing sexual violence and so the way that they phrased that is it is uh, less clear than he has been consistently. Okay, so then he didn't say they're civilians. They're just quoting that as part of the story about Hamas uh, no, weaponizing he, he, has been, he has been clear that he believes they were civilians. The Times is going to say they're describe it as they're wearing civilian clothes, so that the reader can say, well, maybe they were still Hamas. Okay, that is possible, I, right? And I or... and I just picked that one up a because you mentioned. Uh, Roz Cohen, but B, his his testimony is the one that makes the phrase "screams without words." Like so, the headline of the article is "screams without words," and that's a quote from mm -hmm. Roz Cohen: "Screams without words." How Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October seventh, mm -hmm. and it's just inconvenient for the article that the quote they're using in the headline specifically is not Hamas specifically is not in reference to Hamas. 
Um, possibly just as a, a, just as a, yeah, right. According to him, like you could say he was wrong, but he's very he's very clear, and very direct. Okay, I I'll look later to see if he's specifically speculated on whether or not that he was Hamas or not. I'm not sure how much of a, a I don't know how big of a deal that is. I'm curious what because I don't understand this. You guys a lot a lot of the time I mean, it's the head it's the headline, so it's like kind of embarrassing. That's all. Well, you, you guys say over and over again that this wasn't Hamas. What is the implication that ordinary Palestinian civilians just ran over the border and broke as quickly as possible? Or I don't understand what the counter narrative. That's his art. That, what he's saying. Right. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. And all this gets uncomfortable. And then what is he saying it because he wants like justification for some broader retaliation? I, I, I don't know. Uh, here, let me see if I can pull this up for you. Here. Um, here, let me. Let me send this to you. I'll send it on uh, Twitter. Here. This is him talking to Jake, Jake Tapper. Um, oh, that's a seven-minute video. I don't know where the timestamp is. That's fine. Um, I can, I'll look so, at it after. I mean, mm -hmm. what, what? So the New York Times makes a very sweeping claim here: how Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October seventh. Uh, if you go through the article, mm -hmm. trying to find support for that very sweeping claim. You quickly have real trouble backing that up. And well, I feel like the the, the in way journalism. If you're going to make a, if you're going to put something in the headline, you got to have support for it in the article. That's a basic 101 when it comes to journalism. Sure. So I feel like because it's the headline that gets around the world. Yeah, I understand. I think that the the material in the article very easily supports the headline. I think if there's a military well, operation, let's point to some. Let's point. Let's. I've got it up here. Can you point, Denny? <clears throat> um. Sure. Off the top of my head, I remember the there was Cohen and his friend. Um. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Um, Guaita, I think. Show him Guaita. Show him. Yeah, Guaita. Yeah, show him Guaita. Um. He and his friend were laying in some bushes. They apparently mm -hmm. witnessed rapes. Um, well, actually, by the way, one point on that. I'm um, aware that you're going to say that, well, the Guarta guy said that at one point he couldn't watch or he looked away or whatever, and then not, he changed no, no, his no, story. No, no, but, no, not, not that. Not that. Uh, not Schwartz, in her podcast interview, uh -huh. said, okay, I've got Roz Cohen. That's, that's one source. New York Times wants me to have another source. And so um, Roz Cohen gave me numbers of the people that he had numbers for who were hiding with him in the bush. Uh, she got in touch with Sean Guaita, and Sean Guaita said uh, that he had, he didn't see that he didn't see it. In the New York Times, he's quoted in a in a really slippery way. What like let's like because I'm a journalist, like maybe I can see this more clearly than than you can. No, so here's the paragraph: Sean Guaita, one of Mr. Cohen's friends and a fashion designer, said the two were hiding together in the screen bed. True, he said he saw at least four men step out of the van and attack the woman. Who ended up quote between their legs uh he said they were quote talking giggling and shouting quote and that one of them stabbed her with a knife repeatedly quote literally butchering her butchering her like this absolutely horrifying stuff that they witnessed and it seems to me i believe quite clear that they heard and i think cohen witnessed a, a vicious attack a stabbing attack what what is what's this weird What's this weird? Look at the way that this paragraph is written. Now, recall that Anat Schwartz said on the record in this podcast interview that Guaita would not confirm that he had uh, witnessed a rape. Like, that's what she said publicly to this podcast audience. And then no notice that the language in here is quite slippery and does not actually go all the way to saying that she has a second source here. So do you think that Guerta is fabricating things here? Or do you think that Schwartz no, is fabricating I think Guerta, here? I think Guerta was honest, and I think that the time stretched what he said to try to make it fit. What part was stretched? Do you think he just didn't say he saw anything at all, or? Uh, yeah, I think he, no, I, I, don't, I don't know. He, he doesn't, he's not talking anymore. Okay, well, because this is a big, uh, we're basically saying that the writers here have inserted complete and total fiction in this part not, of the story. Not complete, not complete and total fiction. It's, it's just, you you look at the way that they wrote it, and it's just. I'm looking at the way uh, they wrote it. He said he yeah. saw at least four men step out of the van and attack the woman who ended up quote between their legs end quote. He said that they were quote talking, giggling, and shouting end quote. And that one of them stabbed her with a knife repeatedly quote literally butchering her end quote. What part of this? What is the trickily what, written part of the sneakily written part? 
what who what is this what does this phrase mean who ended up quote between their legs well that, whose legs the men's legs like what the, my legs, my what? my guess when reading this was she, my guess is going to be that when she was on the phone with him she probably really wanted to get a confirmation that did you see them rape the girl did you actually see that my guess is either because of his position or his unwillingness to look or whatever he didn't actually see that but maybe maybe he was in a position such that the best you could see was the guys behind her and her legs were open and that's it so maybe that's the biggest quote that she could get from him as well. They were between her legs. I couldn't see if they were raping or not. Are you assuming that between their legs means I don't that? Know what that's, I don't know what that's referring to. Normally, if, if, if as a journalist, if somebody's a source is talking to you about what they saw, you go back to them until it's clear. Uh, if you're, if you're, if, go back to what she said publicly, that he never confirmed it, which is true. What, which time was she being honest? Like that he didn't confirm it or or that he did confirm it in the article. Setting that aside, I, I think this is, I think they witnessed a violent attack. Um, he says this is not Hamas. Like, that, like, does that matter to us? All right, so that, that's so. Well, we keep saying, we keep focusing on this not Hamas. For one, <clears throat> so the first thing is it doesn't matter, actually. Um, if a whole bunch of civilians are breaking through a fence and they're committing violence as a part of or alongside your military operation, you almost necessarily um, condone or at least are responsible for that violence. If a bunch of U.S. soldiers were to break into Mexico and a bunch of U.S. civilians were to follow them and start raping people, you would say sure. the United right. States. Yeah, yeah, so that's, yeah, absolutely. Like, let's, yes, moral responsibility. Sure. That's, that's different than saying it was a deliberate campaign of mass rape. And I think there should be criminal investigations of all of it. Sure. Well, hold on. Not, not only would it be necessarily like probably the responsibility of the invading party, you would also say you have like like culpability in other senses of the word too. Not just like legally or morally, but you're probably allowing it to happen if it is as you're combing through the area and you've got a bunch of people in civilian garb that are now raping women. I think that that's that comes off as condoning it to me. Um, well, I mean, uh, most of the most of the I don't I, I don't know if it's most, but like a significant number of the. No, like the militants who came across the border ended up getting killed that day. Like, sure. Like, the, and they're not a like they're not a police force. I'm not like, but sure, yes. If mm -hmm. they had not launched the attack, then none of it happens on that day. Yeah. Like that. And then I think there's also the kind of the weird thing too that like just be, again because people are in civilian garb, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not Hamas. I'm pretty sure in the original videos. But to of Cohen, like, it is right. But to Cohen, I'm just saying like, do you accept Cohen's expertise over like? Why, what, why do you have like a better, better insight into you know the, the distinctions between uh, Hamas wearing civilian clothes, uh, Palestinian uh, Palestinian civilians, or um, Palestinian civilians that Ron Cohen is, is clear and and certain are not uh, are not Hamas figures? Like think about it. Like if you're walking around. Well, yeah. Well, no, no. Hold on. Well, think about it. Where do you Somebody. Well, hold on. So somebody that does a lot of reading, does a lot of research, and tries to figure the truth out of things, right? So what I would ask is, I wouldn't say, did he say it? I would say, what was his reason for saying it? So for instance, you're telling me, well, he said this over and over and over again. And I don't recall seeing him say that they were definitely civilians. I do recall him saying that they were in civilian garb. But let's say that he did say they were civilians. My question would be, oh, well, what evidence did he put for that? And if it's just the fact that they were in civilian clothes, that would be very strange to me because my understanding is that the IDF claims, and I. I believe even Amnesty International, other people have affirmed that Hamas sometimes wears civilian clothes. So why would I assume just because somebody's in civilian clothes, especially if there are people in civilian clothes that are alongside uh, uh, clothed, like uh, uniformed members of Hamas taking part in the October 7th attacks, why would I assume that every single person in civilian clothes is just an unaffiliated I'd civilian? Say, I'd say because you have to take into account his expertise. That's, that, you, wait, wait, you're not you, answering the question. When you just say his expertise, that's not an answer. That's just like an appeal to authority that means why not? nothing. Because yes, it, you, of course, he's the, he's the person saying it, his authority matters. It absolutely doesn't here, right? Because I'm challenging the, the claim. You can't just appeal to the authority. If he has authority in the area, then authority, authority is never used as a substitution a, for an excuse. A, yeah, authority I mean, means that you can provide a really good excuse. Like if you were to ask me a question about something I have like a lot of authority over, I would say, oh, well, it's because of this, because look, of that, ultimately that, that. It's a sub Ultimately, it's a subjective judgment, even if they're, you know, and so you, this like claim that you can get around it by saying that it's a, a fallacy of an appeal to authority is incorrect because it is literally a subjective judgment. So his his subjective expertise is central to understanding it. 
Uh, all right. So let, all right. What, whatever. Sure. Let's say. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just let's say, just let's say, a real let's quick. say we give you this one. Yeah. Wait, wait, all right. We don't have to. I, to. I just want to say just real quick. Right. Okay. Because I don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. We don't I have to focus on something it. else. Yeah. So tell me something else in the article that supports the headline. Sure. We can. We can. But just as a quick thing. Right. So when you said you said a few times as a journalist, and then you went through this paragraph, you didn't just say as a journalist. You said, well, as a journalist, I see this and this and this, and then you pointed to particular things. That would be an example of like you're citing your authority, but then you're giving examples why you think it's relevant here. You wouldn't just say, well, as a journalist, then leave the. That's all I'm saying. Well, we I've reached out to Roz Cohen. He has, he has not responded. The Times reached out to him for a follow-up story. He said he's not talking anymore, even mm -hmm. to the New York Times. Okay. Uh, so, you know, I don't think that he's been... I, but I think he would... Yeah, yeah, he would give an interesting answer, I think. Okay, why, why are you so sure? Sure, okay. But he um, seems sure. One of the stories that you guys seem to fight against a lot is this one relating to Miss Abdouche. Uh, the lady wanna, in the black wanna, dress. If you want... Yeah, if, if you want to do that one, or you can do the. Uh, they have three. Mm -hmm. they, have the, they have two sisters, and then they have Abdouche. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our article the other day was not about Abdouche; it was about the uh, sisters. Sure. Um, I, th I feel like Abdouche gets brought up in I think the three that I read that you wrote. I think all three of them. I could be yeah. wrong. Um, so the Abdouche one is is very interesting to me. Um, right. And so let's let's try to find even a remote bit of evidence that Hamas was uh, that 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 supports the idea that Hamas uh, launched a launched a mass rape campaign. Sure. Well, I guess the first question what, what is would be the evidence of that. Well, the, well, the first question is, is do we believe this person was raped? I, I think it's it's plausible. Uh, uh, but how the, the, the lack of plausibility comes, however, in the timeline, you, you're familiar with the timeline, right? I, I believe so, yeah. Are you going to bring up the fact that there was a text message four minutes before she was, yeah. Nine nine minutes, yeah. I, the, 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 her, her relative seems to have, have misspoke there. But yes, it's 6.51. She texts, you know, we're at the southern border. Mm -hmm. You have no you have no idea how bad this is. Mm -hmm. um, nine minutes later, um, her husband uh, texts the family and says she's been killed. Um. And he lives for another hour, hour and a half. And he also then ends up being killed. Um, and so the family's, some of the family's response has been, you know, the, uh, we know that a grenade was thrown in. That explains the, the, the charring. Like why, how, how in nine minutes did this happen? And, and why did her husband tell, tell us that she was killed if that wasn't true? Like so, I don't. That that's that's the reason that. Um, why does the family's opinion? Why did how? Why are they ever being sourced in regards to this particular case ever in your guys' articles? I because, don't understand. Be, because the uh, the Times quotes some of the text messages, but doesn't doesn't put the timeline in its article because the timeline undermines the plausibility of. Does it? it? Of Is it impossible to be written nine minutes? No. Uh, but if six fifty, so I, I'm trying to understand how how exactly that works with him still there. Like why? Like why did they kill her and not him? Um. Anyway, uh, I said it like, the, like I, I said, mean, some of the claims like, were also that not, corpses were raped as well, right? So I mean, she could have been dying or dead already and have been raped as possible too. No, it's not. It's certainly not impossible. So I just don't understand why any of the so families. The, the, but it, but well, wait, real quick, because I don't understand. Because I've never, yeah. I've never seen hearsay used to dismiss like witness testimony before. That's What's just like hearsay? A, hearsay is everything the families are saying because they no, don't they know. The, no, they have the text messages. They, no, no, that's not what you guys are usually quoting for the families. You're usually quoting. Well, what, the, are you, what are you dismissing? What what witness? You're dismissing you're the. Dismissing? You're dismissing the impressions of the original video taker. Her impression when she found the lady's body in the position that it was, and the fact that her panties were missing, she's like, oh, I think she's been raped. And then you say, well, her family disagrees. But her family doesn't know anything. They weren't there. None of them witnessed anything. They're, it's, and they're just saying, I think some of them say, well, we didn't hear that or whatever. And it's like, well, okay, well, talk to the people that they didn't hear it from then, right? Right. That, that's a person who came upon the body. And you, I, that's not what you, but that's not a witness of the act it's, it's not a witness of the act but it's like a person who saw it's, it's a person who saw like the actual body right the person that came with the original footage, video footage who saw the body who recorded it i don't understand why families so is, is the new standard here that if something is like within the realm of uh possibility that you can just put in a certain headline at the top of it 
and then and then at the bottom and then through the article say well it's not entirely impossible that that what we put in the headline could have happened so therefore we're going to put a declarative certain headline and we're going to launch a global pr campaign based around that to justify a genocide that's ongoing uh, and then we're going to focus group it and poll it and make it our leading message because it's not impossible separately as the UN said, they, they can't attribute any of this in particular to Hamas. Because they, that wasn't part of their investigative which, which, job, right? So real okay, quick, when we say- New York Times job, It's the New York Times job if they say in the headline, I'll read it to you again. Here. Wait, I, we've read that, I've read that, I've read the headline, okay? Right. I understand the headline. Sure, are you sure? So, I don't think- I don't I'm know. 100% positive, so- How Hamas weaponized sexual violence on October 7th. Correct. They are the ones that then have the obligation to support yeah, and the supporting that evidence for that appears to be a pattern of sexually related violence that happened during a Hamas assault on Israel. You, the excuse that like, well, a bunch of those people were actually civilians. Like if you look at the original video of the wall getting bulldozed down in places, like these are people in civilian garb. Does that not count as Hamas? Is it just ordinary people? Like I feel like if anything, I feel like your end of the story here is supporting genocide more than anything the IDF could say, because you're saying that just ordinary Palestinians decided to, to run through, I guess, and start raping people because they were well, border. Look, and, and, I, and I get that, uh, but I, I, like I could imagine how, now we have uh, civilians, I live in Washington, D.C. Uh -huh. And we have civil we have civilians that uh, carjack people, you know, fairly regularly. Sometimes they even kill those people. Would you say that therefore uh, Washington D.C. ought to be flattened into rubble? Like if if I'm talking to a like a, a moral creature of of, of that turpitude, then uh, nothing I say is going to matter. Like the like you you cannot like destroy an entire civilian population because there are some criminals within that population like that's like collective punishment is is a thing that we used to I, hold on none of this okay so was, i'm just looking this up the metro population of dc yeah. is over five million people dc itself though the metro like population sure but i'm sure there are people in the surrounding metro that drive it and everything okay so yeah, yeah, even around a million sense. people you yeah. had 274 homicides in a year in dc and you, okay, so you're I mean, saying that the population of Gaza is that naturally violent that a hole opens and just streams of no, murderers no, no, no. and rapists mo no, are think, pouring no, no, across? No, most, no, I think most of this, most of the civilians killed on October 7th were killed by Hamas. Okay, but the murders were done by randoms if they happened. What Not rapes? Like you have, you like you, you have a you have a certain headline. Mm -hmm. You have a you, ha you have a headline that expresses certainty. So what like what's I I I think it's likely there was sexual violence. Uh huh. But what's your evidence that there was? Well, I, well, I mean, as so far as the New York Times article um, comes out, I think it's the three stories that they cite. Um, okay, then let's talk about the other one. That, that sure. So Abdush was a woman who was okay. found on her back with her legs open and her panties off. Seems questionable. Um, I think that they said, I think in the original article that, and I think the UN also repeats this claim that I think over they found over 20 people in weird or compromising positions with clothes off, I believe in the UN's report we can find that exactly yeah, that, yeah and they and they said like we we want to like this this deserves, deserves a real investigation mm -hmm. we would hope that Israel would cooperate with it and I, and I would hope that they would too sure you, you may you may indeed be but, able to identify some of those sure but so let's talk about the other two in the New York Times sure okay because yeah. we we don't have all day here so uh let's go to Kibitz Beret here yeah all right so New York I mean, I, I don't even. You can describe this one if you want. It's so gr it's so graphic, um, but it's basically a paramedic who tells the New York Times he saw two sisters, uh, girls, um, who he believed you know had been the subject of victims of rape mm -hmm. before they were killed. Like this is what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, the as as you now know, and I imagine you talked about this on your show, uh, the spokesperson for the kibbutz says that based on all the investigations and the information that they have, that's untrue. Okay, so uh, two, this, wait, wait, this, wait, wait, real this, quick. So two things, here. Yeah, two things here. This, so, paramedic, yeah. this paramedic has also been responsible for a number of um, stories that have since been even... Even Israel has said, okay, those. Yep. Like, so those I'm aware of happen. two stories that this guy gave that were, if assuming this is the same paramedic, which I don't know if that's 100% yeah, established, it is. but assuming the, it is. The one, in the, the baby in the trash can, that one. Um, 
No, I don't believe that one was ever 100% like shot down or disproven. I'm not aware of that. Well, it um, was because th there's there's no baby there that was I, killed. That I that don't know was. if we know if there was no baby there that was killed. Yeah, there were 11 um, under 18. I, I looked through the underlying source. You cite that Mondovi site, and they said that only one baby was killed that day, so it couldn't have been it. But when I checked through the list of victims, even on that kibbutz, I think there were two infants killed. So that already, I tossed out that whole Mondovi thing because it seemed like they were missing some part there. Um, for the part uh, relating to like, the, you said their spokesperson. This is a person hired um, that works as a PR firm for the kibbutz. Again, why would their hearsay testimony, like them saying, well, we heard from other people that this didn't happen. Why not actually interview or cite the people that they talked to? Wouldn't that be more important than like a PR spokesperson who might also have like reasons to want to say that people in their population weren't raped before they were murdered? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be great if uh, Israel would make any of those reports or any of that information um, available. Uh, the UN report uh, says that two. Wait, 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 wait. Why do we have to have Israel make that available? Isn't the spokesperson's name public? I looked them up. You could contact the spokesperson and ask them. Yeah, we no? did. What, yeah, we did ask them. What did they say? They said it didn't happen. They said they, that to you. Yes. Why didn't they? Did you read our article? I yeah. did. But why didn't they give you any of the underlying people that they communicated with? Why did you take that spokesperson's word at face value instead of actually like digging through, like as a journalist, to they, find out who talked to them? They, they have a bunch of different uh, reports that they're that they're uh, that they're basing this. Did on they make of. any of those reports accessible to you, or did you just take no, the no. PR firm's word at face value because it plays into the story nicely? Because it seems weird that we would just take that PR firm story at face value, you don't, and then you don't quote people like who have access to information. And and she's like somebody who's like, look, I, I, I believe no. They, wait, 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 hold on, wait. You just said you don't quote doing. people who have access to information. I imagine you would, but I imagine that you guys would also say, like, off the record, we're not going to print. Can we see what you were looking at just to verify that it's true, right? You wouldn't just yeah, they, because you wouldn't she, just take a PR yes, person's did. words at face value. Oh, we did. She, yeah, she's not. They're they're not going to be any more uh, forthcoming with any of that information. There's a lot of privacy um, re related, a lot of privacy related issues involved. Well, if there's privacy related issues involved so they won't make it available to you, then I don't understand how we can know. All right, you can call her. You, you think she's wrong. You think she read the reports wrong. You think she's a liar. Fine. Uh, well, but, but, you're, well, but to be the, clear, my, the, my claim is less extreme than your claim. Your claim is that there is yeah. a top down campaign that's being facilitated by Israel, by Frank Lutz, by all these other people to do a it PR is. messaging that campaign. That's happening. That's sure. happening. Okay. That's happening. Do we have any that's, evidence that's, of like. That's happening. Of, do we have any hard evidence or even soft evidence of like. Israel giving orders to people. That Zaka volunteer who made shit up—is he like in contact with the IDF and they told him to make stuff up? Or well, you don't need you don't you don't need that. No, I mean, we just need a hunch. Or no, you you like perhaps. Uh, well, we do know uh, that Elon Levy offered to uh, connect media um, with and, and did facilitate connections between this uh, paramedic and the media. So that that we know. Uh, we also know that this paramedic originally said that the that this assault happened in uh nahal oz kibbutz, kibbutz nahal oz uh we know also know that elon levy the israel government spokesperson clipped that interview that the paramedic did with an, a right-wing indian news outlet clipped out nahal oz because there are no people in nahal oz that fit <laughs> what he was saying he clipped it took that out and said it happened in Kibbutz Beret, which did have two girls roughly the same, roughly the ages that he was talking about, not quite, but roughly, um, that uh, could fit. So aren't these two, aren't these two, well, aren't, aren't these two, first of all, se secondly, secondly, well, the but, but also the Indian journalist thing would have been involved too, right? I guess if they're giving this and they're not making a response to their, no, the Indian journalist, they just asked the guy a question uh, and the guy answered the question. But when, when Levy clipped and posted that clip on Twitter, he cut out the Nahal Oz part, presumably because he understood that that undermined the credibility because it was, it was impossible for it to have happened in Nahal Oz. But the UN, UN report says that there were two high profile incidents at Kibbutz Beret that the media covered heavily that they found to be unfounded. One of them was the one that everybody acknowledges now just didn't happen. This is this grotesque fabrication of uh, a pregnant woman being killed, her fetus being ripped out and beheaded, and then the woman being beheaded. Like they're they're like that that did not happen. Like we can be certain 
Uh, yeah, Zaka themselves have come out and said that, yeah. They, exactly. The other one they said was related to a story of a, a young girl who was found away from her family and, and a volunteer thought that, at, that because of that, mm -hmm. that, that was evidence that she had been sexually assaulted. In fact, what they since learned in their investigation was that a bomb squad um, member had moved the body before the paramedic got there. So it was an honest mistake from the paramedic that, that the girl had been actually with her family. Mm -hmm. Now, the New York Times says that that's not a reference to um, the case that they wrote about, the, the case that the kibbutz now says, you know, is inaccurate. They did not explain how that's possible because no, nothing else really fits in that, in that kibbutz. What do you um, mean when we say nothing else really fits? What do we mean by that? What doesn't fit? Uh, there, if you, if you look, there's like 11 uh, children under 18 were killed there. And, and none of the others like fit that scenario with their family and then moved away from their family. Is it so? But it, two, but well, so two things. Two, so one is that I try, to, I try to look up because I'm looking at a lot of the underlying stuff. Yeah. I think you guys use oct7factcheck.org oct or whatever. And then another one called Mondo Beast or whatever. Uh, when I look at their trying to disprove things, so one is I'll click through to the site that they've got that registers all the dead people. Um, and then for the kibbutzes that I checked, it seemed like there were a few names that could have fit, number one. And then number two, the um, the headline at the top says that these are only the names they've been allowed to publish so far. The one that, uh, well, if you look, if you look, if you cross check everything, we did. sites, mm -hmm. right, you find all 11. Um, I, I don't remember we found all 11. I wasn't checking with the 11 thing. I was just looking for ages and young girls that could have fit. Right. And it seemed like there were uh, plausible the only, people. The only, the only other one that fits the age uh, was, was killed uh, on the way. You know, well, there are two that could have fit. One was killed in, in a strike on her home. Um, and the other was killed on the way to Gaza. Uh, so they weren't, they could, they could not have been found um, in this. Uh, you know, it, it deserves more investigation, and UN should be more forthcoming about more more details around this. But as far as our efforts to like cross reference this, we can't find any others that would that would fit it. Sure. Are you? Would you admit or consider it or say that like in in all of your articles and writing about this, you almost exclusively rely on other people that were never originally part of the mission or were never on the ground or never anything to discredit what other people claim happened at the site, right? Sorry, say that again? Sorry. That in, so <clears throat> if somebody were to say, I found this or that, and somebody was to try to contradict that claim, I imagine they would be contacting other people that were in the area, other people with direct access to the information, rather than just like family members who texted this or somebody who said this probably couldn't have happened. Right, but what if nobody else saw it? There were, weren't there tons of people that were involved in like sweeping through these places and yeah, going through? Yeah, kind of interesting. kind of interesting then that nobody else saw it, isn't it? So you think all of these then were fabricated, or were they all of what? Any I mean, of the sexual assault events, or according to the kibbutz, according to the kibbutz, this one is just inaccurate. Well, according to a PR spokesperson hired by the kibbutz, yeah. who didn't make you aware of how they got that information, they said that it didn't happen. But isn't I mean, there also like a vested just, like, interest? Well, isn't there a vested you're, interest in you're people? Do, you're doing you're doing exactly what you're accusing your critics of, except I'm giving you much more concrete stuff. Well, you haven't given and me. You're just you're just finding ways to just say, well, maybe this is still plausible. Uh, but again, you can't run a certain headline and then launch a PR campaign around it based on the argument that maybe it's not impossible that this happened. That's not what the New York Times said. That's not what Israel says. Sure. They say, they so say this happened I think, yeah, I and understand. it justifies yeah, our I'm annihilation of, the, so, of this barbaric population. First of all, I don't think it, I don't know if it would justify or not justify anything. And when you say that- well, It's being like, used, when you it's being used. Like Frank, Frank Luntz is not using it towards a ceasefire. That's fine, but that- He's that using would, it to oppose a ceasefire. Is your job to make sure you're doing PR for one side or the other, or is your job to collect and get an accurate assessment of the facts I'm, on the I'm just analyzing this objectively for you, that Israel is using this in order to oppose efforts to implement a ceasefire and, and to just and to justify the starvation uh, of the entire population with the hope that they will be cleared out. Do you think there's a popular? Do you think that there's a propaganda campaign on the other side as well? It's it's not very sophisticated. Really, uh, for I mean, weeks it, when it, everybody it, was convinced that Israel bombed been. that hospital and killed 500 people. 
Have you seen the latest from Forensic Architecture on that one, by the way? Yeah, I went through the picture clipping a little bit, yeah, but... Yeah, so the Forensic Architecture, which is uh, by no means, you know, Palestinian-like leaning, uh, it found that, found that the most likely way that that happened was... It was not a deliberate strike by Israel. It was an, it was an Iron Dome with, um, interceptor that hit a Palestinian... Uh, uh, Islamic Jihad rocket, uh, and then deflected and landed in, in the hospital. They, they 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 also argue on top of that that the it could not have been um, an Islamic Jihad rocket because all of that they 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 found all of them in the area and all of them had no spent had had uh, no had no fuel left, uh, and you need fuel in order to create an explosion that kills. Hundreds. They, well, they wouldn't be uh, filled up because it would have exploded, right? No, no, no. It's it, the fuel fuels the explosion. By the time they hit the ground, they they were their that fuel is gone. Uh, but the interceptors still have fuel. Uh, so th that, that's according to forensic architects. Wait, hold on. So, I don't, I'm sorry. Explain this real quick because the interceptors are supposed to explode when they're near the missile. So I don't know how they would still have fuel, unless you're it, saying it, it, it deflect it deflected and landed. I don't understand what deflected means. So it hit. You know, it's trying to hit it and blow up, take it right out of the Not air, necessarily. Right? I don't think it has to. I don't think it, the goal is to hit it. The goal is to explode next to it. I don't think it has to strike it or hit it. Wait, are you under the impression that the it has to hit the thing head on in order no, to explode? If it, if it blows up close enough to it, it can take it out. Okay. Uh, but sometimes they don't work perfectly. And this one, according to forensic architecture, deflected at the hospital. And if that's, if that's the evidence of uh, a sophisticated uh, kind of Hamas PR campaign, uh, you know, they they lost that one. Um, How did they lose that one? I'm pretty sure the majority of people, everyone, you included, no, still thinks Israel hit that hospital. <laughs> no, not like constantly you hear from people like yourself that 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 is evidence that everything they say is a lie. You And you can't believe a word they say. The president I've of the United States. I've never made that claim. That but the, the president of the United States out of the gate said you can't trust Palestinians. I mean, correct. You can't trust Hamas numbers. I, I mean, I think that their trustworthiness is a lot lower than Israel's, of course. Right. You, you think there's anybody's trustworthy like the, the, the Israeli government? You, you, you believe a democratically you believe elected that the, regime you, that hosts within its own borders organizations like Bet Salem or left-leaning journalists like Haaretz is more trustworthy than is an Islamic fundamentalist government that has an you, iron you, claw you, over their people and kills people they think are clobbing with enemy. Yeah, of course, I, I, think I wouldn't believe. I wouldn't. I wouldn't believe anything that either of them say. No, so wait. So you think like they both without, have equal amounts of credibility? It. Zero equal amounts of lack of credibility. Yes. Yeah, zero. Like, bro, they're both at zero. Like, how many lies does does a government have to tell you before you're like, you know what, I'm I'm not believing anything without um, checking it from you. I mean, I think checking stuff it, is it, good. You know, you know but... what Israel? You know what Israel? Go go to Elon Levy's account right now. Right now, he's telling the world that Israel is actually not uh, doing anything to restrict aid from getting into Gaza. He has contempt for you, and you are still out there saying that you might believe something they say what is it what part of that is that it, contempt wait what that he thinks that he can tell you not to believe your own lying eyes he thinks he can go to you and say israel has nothing to do with the restrictions on aid getting into gaza it's all hamas stealing it and the un is disorganized and and we have nothing to do with this as their ministers have said for months it is their strategy to restrict aid. They will say over here one thing, their spokesperson will say the complete opposite. That is contempt for you. That is believing that you are either so stupid or so gullible that they can, or, or so blindly supportive of their project that they don't even have to be sophisticated. Isn't, the, isn't, one, of the the huge, isn't one of the huge issues right now that, the, um, that a lot of the aid trucks just don't feel safe going into the Gaza Strip, whether it's because of Israel's military operations, whether it's because of Hamas people hijacking the aid, whether it's because of people's trucks getting swarmed or whatever. Is, I've been, I try to find evidence of this claim that Israel was blocking aid from going in, but I feel like if Israel, that was what was happening, what, I feel like there would be Israel, a billion stories about how like aid trucks weren't are, going in. I see stories about how- there are, there are a billion stories that Israel how, is blocking the aid going in. You, you are a mark. 
like how are you believing this stuff from them because they, i just try to find because i don't they, have they, a pre-existing news, narrative relating to the united states and israel and blah 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 they, i just try to find the stories so one of one of the one of their policies is that they kind of have they have to unload and load these trucks three different times and if they find like a tent pole in the truck that is for a tent because you know there are two million displaced people uh they will take the entire truck and send it back do you think that it might make they sense? Do, all, Wait, do, do you think, it, do you think it might make sense? They do this all extremely slowly That's... so that there is a trickle of aid getting in. The result is children starving to death in front of their parents, parents starving to death in, in front of their children. Why not have Hamas? If that's true, why not have Hamas? If that's true, why not just have Hamas? Why not just have Hamas release the hostages? It's fine. Hamas release the hostages. Then what? They're then the conflict ends. Oh, wh why would it? You should look into what happened in 1982. Are you familiar for Lebanon? With what, what in 1982 in Lebanon? What about it? So I Israel uh, enacted a strategy to create so much civilian pain and death uh, that the Lebanese population would turn against the Palestinian Authority and 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 pressure them to leave. Why was the Palestinian less, Authority in Lebanon in 82? Uh, because they got because uh, Israel like raided them in in the West Bank. Really? Uh, yeah. It's not because uh, in 1970 they tried to coup the Jordanian king and they got completely tossed out of the country and they started losing support across the entire Arab world and Lebanon and the South was one of the only places that would host them afterwards. Wait, wait, we're, what? We're talking about what happened. We're talking about what happened in 1982. I understand, so, but the fact that you think that they got expelled from Jordan because Israel was attacking them is completely yes, not true. It's not remotely like the, true. The, the, the PLO and the Arab nations have been at loggerheads the entire time because the PLO okay. tries to kill or coup all the Arab nations that host them. Why do you okay, think Egypt, for I, instance, had, why do you think that Egypt has the blockade right now on the Gaza Strip? And we're only bringing this up because you want to talk about 82 yes, and the Lebanon War. Yes, because Egypt is a dictatorship and the Muslim Brotherhood, it is, which is their existential fear, uh, is ideologically aligned uh, with like Hamas, some with some elements of Hamas and others. Is, is, and also because there was a ton of smuggling of weapons and people in and out of the Gaza Strip through the Egyptian border, through tunnels and everything, too. Anyway, yeah. just very just very quickly for people who don't know what happened. In, in 1982, the, the PLO agreed, OK, if you will end the slaughter, uh, then we will leave. And they, the U.N. force uh, came in to oversee the their departure out of the port of uh, Beirut. Um, one, th there was an agreement that Israel that. If, if PLO surrenders, this ends tomorrow. Like the exact same language that you hear today. Uh, so they, the, and then the UN force leaves as the PLO goes over to Tunisia and fill it in. What happens after the PLO leaves to the, to the Lebanese uh, population at the hands of the IDF and its proxies there? What, what happens? The, I, the phalanges are the proxies of the IDF? Why, why were the phalanges so incensed? This is just relentless denialism here. It's not relentless denialism. Like, you just have a one-sided view of the history. Why were the phalanges so upset at the Palestinians? Who got assassinated? Oh, By oh, who? What happened? Like, oh, so, so it's justified? Like I didn't say it was thousands, justified, but you're making it sound like... Then what's like, the point? Then what's the point? Because you're, the that point every, is to everybody not... Everybody has grievances. Do you think that there is a group of people in the world that doesn't have grievances against another people? No, but you're making it sound like Israel can have no grievances. You're making it sound like Israel they is just walking grievances. around murdering and kill killing people for no reason. They can have grievances. They can't just slaughter thousands of civilians. I agree, over those, and they over shouldn't. Those grievances. But if you're saying oh, that like- did. But they did. If, well, so they didn't, technically why. they yeah. didn't. That's not true, that's a right. historical. We know that's true. They, it wasn't them that did it. Um, they Ariel, had the ability to intervene. They could have, but they Ariel, didn't. And Ariel Sharon was like <laughs> keen to see it happen. Like none of this is in question. I don't necessarily uh, disagree. Although, but, it, although apparently there is a world in which this is in, in I question. I didn't question any of that. The, um, the, that let's say that I, I'm not even gonna take everything you said it's true. Yeah. Why wouldn't Israel have just completely annihilated Hamas in, um, in 2008 or in 2014 for a cast light or protective edge or after the great march of return in 2018 if Israel is just a bloodthirsty murderous country well, that wants to kill Hamas? Like, well, I mean, they're trying, to, they're trying to do it now. Let's see if they pull it off. Well, but do you think maybe they're trying to do it now because it's in response to like an unprecedentedly massive terrorist attack, the largest in Israeli history? Carried out, carried out by an organization that they, that they funded and propped up in that order they funded? to prove, yes. Who do you think funded Hamas? Qatar, through, through with with Israel's support. They allowed the money to go in. Were they supposed to just starve Why? the entire? Because Why? if not, the entire Gaza no, Strip no, no. falls into. That, that, uh, why? Why did Netanyahu say that he was propping up Hamas? 
his explanation, well, do you want me to tell you what he said or do you want me to give you the one quote that got pulled out of that article, I think by Blumenthal to say what he said? Because the answer that you're gonna give is he wanted to fund them to divide the PA or whatever, to maintain Israel's strength over the divided Palestinians. And you think he only said that once? The fuller, the fuller quote that he gave in that speech was he didn't want to see, uh, which by the way, there is debate on both sides of his valid. I'm not gonna sit here and defend him, but his, his actual explanation was he didn't want to deprive the Gaza Strip of so much money that the entire region fell into disarray, forcing the IDF to go and clean it up and then hand that territory back to Abbas on a silver platter that he'd already lost control of once. That was his full explanation. Right, so dividing the, dividing the Palestinian... I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but you understand they're already divided, right? Like unity governments that Hamas has formed with the, with the PA in the past have led to Hamas planning to like coup the government uh, in the West Bank itself. Like they're already divided. And Netanyahu doesn't have to do anything to separate out Hamas from yeah, and Abbas and the PA. And yet, and yet he did. For the purpose, and what was his purpose? That he, what, what was his purpose? Why I'm sorry, did, but why I don't live in like, quotes. I don't live in one line quotations. I, this is not how I analyze anything going okay. on in this region. Like, what, 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 okay, Netanyahu has said over and over for decades that he is the only figure who has been able to prevent the formation of a Palestinian state. And yet in 2011, he publicly acknowledged a, a, a two state solution. He put a hold on oh, settlements I you for don't eight live months. In quotes. I, I, I don't in live in quotes. This was part of a, a negotiation that was being worked on between him and Abbas for a while in 2011. And then lo and behold, I think 13 different Palestinian armed militant groups came together to try to do some attacks to stall those talks. And then Abbas ended up stalling, but I'm pretty sure Netanyahu froze settlement expansion for about, I think it was about nine or 10 months. He acknowledged that maybe two state solution is possible. That was in 2011. And then on from there, nothing happens. But the yeah, idea that like that Netanyahu needs to divide Hamas and the PA is just do doesn't make any sense. Again, they're already divided. Like the, the Hamas literally threw Fatah out of the Gaza Strip uh, after they won their elections. Like they don't need yeah, to Hamas, do anything to divide ha her. Hamas is brutal, and I think any leftists who kind of defend Hamas need to need to remember that you're you're kind of a uh, just a useful idiot then for Netanyahu. If if Netanyahu is supportive of this organization and being in powers so that it divides uh, Palestinians and prevents the formation of of actual demands towards towards toward a state uh then why 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 t why side with Netanyahu on that question that's that, that's what I would argue but then so is Israel's mission then to remove Hamas from the Gaza Strip wrong well I mean they're 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 uh, I don't think that's actually their mission I think it's the, their mission is to make the Gaza Strip uh, uninhabitable, and, uh, and and end the question uh, once and for all. Wait. So, do we think w would removing Hamas be a worthy mission? Would they have justification for I, that? I, I don't think I, I, it's it's always impossible for like external actors to effectively do that sort of thing. But I think that uh, they should allow a a, a Palestinian unity government. Um, where, where Hamas is not running it is is better for a for Palestinian liberation. Yes. So they so then removing Hamas is a worthy goal, but they're not trying to do that. But what but would it be? I'm just trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to get they're to the first right. Would it be a worthy goal to remove Hamas from government at the Gaza Strip? Of worthy goal of, it, it, uh, but that that doesn't make any sense because that implies that 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 Israel would ever like try to do that dis like directly and discreetly. That's not what they're that's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to clear out everybody out. But yes, if yes, if if they sat down with Qatar uh, and and Hamas that in these negotiations and said we would like Hamas out of power and we would like a unity government, uh, how could they how runs, could they that possibly that do that? That that's the that's basically the solution that Qatar has been putting forward, and Hamas, um, you know, has has effectively agreed in that direction. Now Hamas is going to be. You know, or Hamas figures are going to be part of this unity government. That's just that's just like part of it. Like that's that's how it's that's like that's how like wars end. Wars I'm sorry end to look up real quick. You're saying solution. Qatar is trying to facilitate a deal where Hamas is no longer the governing uh, body in yes. Gaza, and then the I, I gotta I gotta I gotta run. But yes, go that that has been widely reported. Okay. Do you? It's just a final question. But, then, but that's not. What, but that's not what. That's not what uh, Israel wants, though. Israel wants it cleared out. Sure. Just as a final question, then. So, do you think that, in light of the UN stuff, do you think that there was like widespread or multiple events across October seventh of like sexual assault it, it, it happening? I I think that their phrase that it's uh that it's uh reasonable to conclude that I think is is 
is I think it's reasonable to assume that that's uh, that 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 had happened. I th but we but like we should uh, continue investigating it. Okay. All and right. We, sh it sh we shouldn't just la we shouldn't just live in in the land of speculation. Sure. Okay. Well, hey, listen. Uh, even though it was combative, I do appreciate the conversation. Thanks a lot. And you got it. Yeah. Good luck on your stuff. Bye. All right. Talk to you later. Jesus Christ. That wasn't even my last question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. Okay. <laughs> what? The... The tone of the conversation compared to with um, um, I almost said Hamas with Hassan and uh, Jeremy was it yesterday? Did the, I, I think that oh my god, bro, fuck me. Look at all these civilians. Look at all the civilians. This guy shops at Target. Holy shit. Wait. The woke progressives? Anybody see this woke progressive? Wearing a mask outside, 2023. I almost said 2024. How did that guy know that they were civilians not special forces? Well, he's special forces. <laughs> okay, but like what? He just knows, he knows all of them. <laughs> he, part of the IDF special forces training is seeing every single picture of Hamas and remembering all of them. <laughs> My God. <sighs> to be clear, uh, to just finalize this, um, for my, uh, my opinion on this is, it does seem pretty convincing that there was a pattern of sexual violence. Um, <clears throat> was it intentional from the start for Hamas to utilize this? I don't know, it's hard to say. Um, I just don't like how they're saying they've completely debunked something with like hearsay from third parties that were nowhere near any of the situation and they wouldn't actually interview the people that they got the hearsay from. That's what I don't understand. And then also, um, I don't remember what I was going to say now. Oh, I do remember. The religious shit is hella lame. That... The Zaka people, no offense to my Jewish brothers and sisters out there, okay? Who are religious and retarded, but... That burying the bodies ASAP shit and all of that was just on stupid. Would it be reasonable that Hamas didn't sexually assault, but it was the people that went in after Hamas attacked? If that is true, you are providing a far more monstrous view of the Palestinian people than Israel could have ever hoped to. I just want to check real quick if that guy did say he knew they were civilians. More time that passes since the October 7th attacks. Oz, I know none of this is the more. What? Does this guy look like Middle Eastern Shia LaBeouf to anybody else? Am I crazy? Give it to me. This guy. Come on. Come on. A little bit. The focal length on the, ca the camera is off a bit here. And one of those witnesses is 24-year-old Raz Kohane, who attended the Nova Festival with his friends, and he survived. Um, Raz, I know none of this is easy to talk about, but it's important that the world hear from witnesses. While you were hiding out that day, hiding from Hamas, uh, you saw five men, five of these terrorists, pulling a young woman out of a van. Tell, tell us what you saw next. I hide in the bush and uh, 30 meters from the bush. 
I feel like you should push him to get a, make a really solid claim about the conspiracy he obviously believes. It's too easy for someone to turtle up and just be infinitely skeptical. Yeah, I, I tried to do that in the beginning. I actually thought about that before the conversation. I feel like I have like a very, I truly, it's, I'm, what's happening is I'm treating these people with kid gloves. Huh. This is the reason why I said I don't like, everybody in my separate is like, oh, he's not gonna go mainstream. Oh, he's not gonna go mainstream. Oh. Like, and then I'd always say like, I don't really like the mainstream stuff as much. The reason why is because when I'm having debates with like Tonka Saw or Andy Warsky or Brittany Venti or even like Lauren Southern or even like Max and have right? Like by the end of this combo, we can really get into like what we're talking about. Like, oh, you're do you believe this or do you believe that? Right? It seems screaming, it seems crazy. And people will say like, oh, this is just debate pedophilia, debate perpetry. But in a way, I feel like it's more honest and I feel like it's a little bit more telling than some of the mainstream stuff where like when I'm chatting with these people, I have to be so careful because he was already, he was already getting like pretty triggered. Like as soon as in the beginning where he's like, as a journalist, and I'm trying really hard, it's like, are you trying to little bro me, dude? Like, what do you mean as a journalist? Like, as a journalist, let me tell you about 82 in Lebanon, okay? Let me tell you about like, what do you, what do you know about Lebanon 82 besides Twitter headline? What do you mean? Let me tell you about the, is, he didn't, he had no idea why the phalanges were so ass bad about the PLO and everything. He had no idea about the assassination of the Christian president and all this shit. He didn't know any of this shit, but he's trying to cite Twitter headlines at me. Don't quote the old text at me, okay? I was there when the wiki was written, all right? But anyway. Um, I can already tell that he's like on the verge of breaking as I'm asking questions. And if this was like an old school like blood sports debate, right? Um, if it was an old school blood sports debate, then we could have that conversation where I could just scream at him. Like, tell me what you think happened. Do you think the Jews, do you think the Jews are, um, are trying to, you know, yeah, concoct propaganda, invent mass rapes, like blah, 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 like, but, I, but, it, but yeah. But if I break somebody too much like that, then um, yeah, it's over. <sighs> Was he supposed to leave then, or do you think he straight up lied? No, I think he he's a pretty busy guy. I doubt he just straight up lied. Oh, and he's going on the majority report. Hello, YouTube, why do you do this? It was protests. Oh wait, we didn't even finish my test, sorry. In the bush, and uh, 30 meters from the bush, I saw a, a white van that arrived uh, near the bush. And uh, from the van, uh, uh, five guys, five uh, uh, c civilians is from uh, Gaza. Normal civilians is not uh, soldiers uh, from Nukhba's uh, soldiers. It was uh, <clears throat> regular uh, people from Gaza with uh, normal clothes. And uh, they uh, started to pull her clothes off. Okay, he does say normal civilians here, but the only thing he cites is the fact that they're in civilian clothes. I wonder if there's any other indication that they were ordinary civilians. Uh, it was it was like a half a circle, and uh, the girl was in the middle of the circle, and uh, after they pulled the clothes uh, off uh, of the girl, uh, they started to one one of them started to to rape her, and uh, it was something like a 30, 30 seconds. And uh, the only rapists are in the IDF. Jake, your role in pushing disinfo is going to follow you forever, especially if the war crime charges stick. Damn. Israeli soldiers accused of raping eleven-year-old. At least 17 soldiers and five civilians are under investigation for the rape of an 11-year-old girl at an Israeli airbase. Damn. Is the argument that the sexual assault was not top-down systematic? Do you believe evidence supports that it was? Um, I think that it's an open question right now. I mean, if there are multiple rapes happening in multiple spots with like gang rapes and shit, it seems like that would be the case. Uh, the, the truly unfortunate and tragic answer is we'll probably never know because of the autistic policies of retarded religious people obsessing over corpses more than necrophiliacs do. Um, and you guys feeling like you've got to bury some charred f body like the person cares anymore. Actual f AIDS autism. We need to respect the bodies. How stupid. And then as a result of the of the of the. <clears throat> 
of the mystical woo-woo bullshit obsession with respect and burying your dead, now you've deprived anybody of actual justice by doing forensic investigations of the bodies because you're so obsessed with getting them underneath the dirt so quickly. Ugh, dumb. I don't know if you cover this, but at least one killed after airdrop falls on them in Gaza. No shot. Oh, never mind. It's based to say that both of countries are shitty. No, that's retarded. Drawing false equivalencies between things is... The reason he says it is that the perpetrators of October 7th are not just regular Hamas, but Nukba forces, their elite unit, which all have specialized gear. So we probably compared the guys from the white van to the other militants to try to fest on how they looked. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Holy shit, we used to do this shit in a... Uh... Could you die to the crates and... In the Call of Duty Battle Royale? Oh, I wonder if they have parachutes that are supposed to deploy and one didn't. Wait, am I about to watch somebody get crushed? Hold on. No one dies, you're fine. Bro, tell me this doesn't look like some PUBG shit. Apparently there is footage of somebody getting hit by one of these things. Press F. <laughs> 